Good morning. Welcome to Nova Code Camp. This is the data track. Um, we, uh, sorry, we're a couple minutes late there, but um, we're good to go. Um, I want to introduce our first speaker. Gant Laborde is an owner of Infinite Red, mentor, adjunct professor, published author, and award-winning speaker. For 20 years, he has been involved in software development and continues strong today. He's recognized as a Google developer Google developer expert in web and machine learning, but informally he is an open sourcer and aspires to one day become a mad scientist. He <laughs> blogs, videos, and maintains popular repositories for the community. Follow Gantt's adventures at gantlaboard.com. And welcome to Gantt. There we go. Hey. Hello, fellow humans. How's everybody doing today? Okay, well, ooh, ooh, calm down, calm down. <clears throat> so many people, right? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> my goal, because one, it's early, and two, it's uh, early, and three, because we're talking about data, and that can be sometimes boring to people, I'd be doing my best to make sure this adventure into machine learning and JavaScript is. Uh, well, that it is interesting, exciting, and I will be your guide. So if you're very, very, very familiar with machine learning, then uh, feel free to go ahead and ask the advanced questions. And if you are brand new to all this, don't worry. This guide is definitely beginner friendly. As a matter of fact, it's beginner motivationally dangerous. So what I'll say is, uh, the wild world of machine learning is about to be unveiled before your eyes. Uh, can I would like uh, to ask a favor first, and that is specifically that those of you who are watching to perhaps join in the Discord uh, chat on the data track. Uh, the reason I want this is because it is uh, it is kind of nice to get a little bit of a feedback loop. Even machine learning needs that. And I think it would be really cool if I knew um, the experience levels, the interests, and then actually got some kind of human connection with people who are doing such a fantastic job of listening um, on whether or not you want to hear more about something or not. Now, I believe I have about 50 minutes, which is a fantastic amount of time to go ahead and show you some really cool stuff. Um, but my talk is structured in a particular way so that I can spend more time showing you things that you're interested in rather than things you're not interested in. So as I said a moment ago, if you can hop into the track dash data, which I believe everybody has access to in a text channel in the Discord Slack for this particular talk. Uh, so that with all that said, hopefully I'll see some of you in there and I'll try to kind of keep my eye on it a little bit here and there. And then you can, of course, get your Q&A going as well. Oh, hi, Stan. All right, let's have some fun. So let's share the desktop as I think it's uh, said in many, many countries. So I'm going to go ahead and choose my entire screen too. And then uh, let's go ahead and test out that chat for a second here. Make sure, are you uh, seeing adventures in AI and JavaScript? I believe, yeah. So woohoo! if you are not seeing that slide, uh, let me know in the chat. So who is this dude, right? Um, this Gantt Laborde. Well, this Gantt guy is, aha, right here. Um, you heard a little bit about me in the intro, but it's important to know that I am um, owner of a company and I'm a CIO, which means Chief Innovation Officer at our company. And Chief Innovation Officer uh, is a made up title. And it means that I'm an executive level uh, employee, but I don't have any real responsibility, which lets me do cool things like interact with people on the weekends and build a uh, weird and cool stuff for our team to use and then help us get some of those crazy cool clients with some of the neat ideas that we have. 
So as a consulting company, we build mobile and web apps, but my real passion lately has been AI. Um, so I am also a big JavaScript developer. Um, yeah, you know, I don't know what languages you've done before, but JavaScript is everywhere, right? And that's sort of like a bit of a theme for every talk, for every language is that you can get things to JavaScript, they go everywhere. So I just kind of want to talk a little bit about that and say, by the way, I do uh, React Native. And React Native is, is sort of like the premise of, hey, AI goes everywhere, right? Because <laughs> it's like, I mean, so not AI goes everywhere, uh, JavaScript goes everywhere because we're using JavaScript to make Android and iOS apps and Windows apps and Mac apps all in JavaScript. It's either your nightmare or your dream. Uh, so you tell me. Additionally, like we mentioned earlier, Google Developer Expert in Web and Machine Learning, which I think places me perfectly to talk about JavaScript and machine learning. Uh, so that's really cool as well. And then last, I'll say, here is my Twitter handle. Go follow me now. Definitely, I promise I will give stuff away. Um, I'm going to be giving away some stuff uh, later on today. I, I love to give stuff away. I love to tweet about this kind of stuff. I love to talk about the mad science kinds of things. So Gant Labord on Twitter, go follow me. I just got out of tweet jail the other day. Uh, so I'm pretty happy to be back in the real world. Apparently Twitter just broke about two and a half days ago and blocked a whole bunch of people and had all kinds of issues. And I was one of those accounts. So I'm back. Uh, please go follow me on Twitter. I promise lots of fun and interesting content. Um, usually sometimes looking like this. I have a friend in Japan. She draws all kinds of really cool stuff. So it's really neat. Uh, if you see any of these crazy avatars around GitHub, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, or something like that, that's me. Um, and if you want some stickers of this silly stuff, let me know. All right, absolutely. So. Let's get into this for a moment with AI. Now, I would love to know what the audience's uh, level of understanding AI is, because um, I see one person in the chat is named Scott PhD, and I'm pretty sure like it's not Scott Billy uh, from you know Dallas. That that's probably somebody who knows a lot about <laughs> a lot about AI. Uh, so if you can in the chat, let me know a little bit of what you've got here. So uh, while you're doing that, I'm going to do some basic terminology to help people out, especially the people who see this term and are a little bit afraid. Um, AI is by far the <laughs> umbrella term of what's going on in you know this this world of okay artificial intelligence. It ranges all the way from playing Street Fighter and having it always doing these moves that someone coded all the way to the cool stuff that you've heard like deep learning machine learning reinforcement learning that's given ai this ability to beat humans in chess and go so ai is a quite a wildly uh, various subject and uh, those of us who are old um you know we know that ai wasn't always a hot thing oh you know it's actually really taken off in the last decade, especially in the last five years. It's only getting even hotter over the next uh, next five and 10 years. It's going to be huge. So why did AI, which has been around since the, you know, I think the coined term was in the 50s of artificial intelligence, like right after we invent computers and we put them out there, we, we decided we're going to create this thing called artificial intelligence. Why is it? taken so long and the truth is um, what we're seeing now is a significant amount of machine learning and machine learning is what we are kind of getting a lot of time and energy towards now because machine learning is the concept of not explicitly programming the AI by hand but actually letting it learn from data and most recently we have a ton a ton a ton of data you might hear like oh yeah we've got tons of uh you know like it, just all the social networks are mining data data is the new oil 
Um, and so it's like a really important aspect of all these things. Sure, I, I totally get that. So uh, one of the things I'll say is that like, yeah, it's it's pretty interesting that we've got that. Um, you know, I don't know if this conference is actually on a delay. I want to I want to test something out for a second. Um, hey, everybody in the chat, can you right now type the number one? I just want to see what the delay would be. So if you could type the number one as fast as you can, um, I want to do a social experiment, but I can't do it if we're on a huge delay. So uh, I see people typing and no one's typing a one. OK, well, that helps me out because I, I wanted to actually do something really fun. But if we're on a huge delay from this talk, then I can't uh, I can't do the next part. But uh, what I wanted to say, I thought it's not too bad. 10 to 20 seconds. You know what? Let's try this experiment anyway. Let's just have some fun, right? Um, so data is teaching these algorithms and is writing things that we've never actually got a chance to see before. And what's great about that is that uh, we we are doing things we could have never conceived to program before. And uh, you know what? Let's let's just see if y'all are excited about that. So uh, we are going to do the demo. Looks like 10 to 20 seconds. That's not bad. Um, so what I'm going to need you to do is uh, I need to know whether or not you're actually enjoying this talk. And this is something that we'll totally be able to do here. So what I want to say here is I'm going to open up this thing called Enjoying the Show, which is a little project that I have. And so Enjoying the Show, I am going to uh, give you a, a room to join. And I promise I'm not getting your faces. None of that stuff's going to be sent to me. So I want you to come to enjoying the show. And then when it goes to join room, we're going to type Nova like that. OK, so I'm going to watch the Nova room on my side. And I want you to join the Nova room. So I'm going to take this. Uh, actually, I'm going to take this link. I'm going to put it over here in the chat so that you can join that room right now. Uh, I'm going to say please join. And this will hopefully like hammer home a little bit of like what I think is amazing about this, uh, this aspect of what we're doing right now. So I can see one person's joined the room um, and then depending on the delay, they're getting asked whether or not they can see their camera or not. Uh, <laughs> and then they're freaking out because they might not have heard me say that it's OK, it's not sending their face. Uh, so as soon as they say yes, uh, I'll allow it to see my camera. We should see some interesting things about this Nova room right here. Um, and this is like a, it's a fun little experiment. Ooh, three people are in there now. OK, so let's. Let's see. Ah, you can see one person's in there or at least everybody in there is happy. OK, so uh, <laughs> now now uh, <laughs> I'm going to type in the chat now make faces. <laughs> and then what's really cool about this is that as they uh, yeah, there you go. We are watching that person, so. I love this is that now I've got a real time interaction with you to uh, using all this cool technology. Now uh, we I don't know how to write something that actually looks at a person's face and tells me their expressions. But what I do have <laughs> is the ability to uh, teach a computer to do that from looking at tons and tons and tons of faces. as <laughs> Somebody's angry. <laughs> And uh, what that does is that gives me the ability to uh, sort of like see what my crowd is feeling and doing. And this is like a really cool little experiment. I built this. Um, you could use this however you want. But if this doesn't get you excited about AI and JavaScript, then I don't know what does. Uh, look how fun it is. Now what's crazy about this is like you all are seeing it, your, your own expressions with a 10 to 20 second delay. Um, but you could open up a room side by side and totally watch yourself. And what? What person is forever angry? I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, but it's a lot of fun. So, in any case, uh, this is this is like where we're at now, where where we could kind of build these fun things for talks and interactions. I am going to close this down because it makes no sense for me to know how you felt about my talk 20 seconds after it's happened. But this is a nice little way to go ahead and do it. So I kind of wish I could leave this open the entire time, but uh, hopefully that kind of like lets you know like the ideas that we're having here. And truth be told, this you know it's it's not a hundred percent because some faces are just absolutely impossible to identify 
Um, but yeah, it's the cool stuff that we can do here, and it's fun for us to kick off our day. So <clears throat> why are we caring about machine learning at all? And I think the fun concept is we have this ability to, uh, if I trained this on my face, it would have basically broken as soon as it goes, looks at someone else's face, especially if I'm coding it. But I, the cool thing is I can train it for all these faces. I don't have to worry about thinking about this for myself. Uh, same thing happens here is that like the more data that comes in, the more faces that come in, the better the algorithm gets. Um, I myself don't have to like identify the differences between them all. And that's the exciting part about this. Um, you can train based on data, which is readily available now. So the why do we care about machine learning? The answer is the power. We want the ability to do these really cool things. And we're not the only ones. Uh, the Fortune 500 companies have um, definitely been looking at this for a while. You could see that uh, Google had fewer than like four TensorFlow machine learning models. And at the end of 2017 had over 4,000 in production. And now, like, I mean, they haven't released any new numbers, but geez, um, I, I guarantee you they're shoving machine learning into everything that they can. Um, even my my emails now are trying to auto complete themselves. Um, it's pretty wild. So um, if you are like, OK, interesting, cool, whatever, like dinky tricks, can't, nice job. No, 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 the, the future tricks. That's that's what we're looking at today. Um, and it's a great way to jumpstart what's going on. It's so like if you, the more you learn about AI, the more you are sort of like an authority in 2025, 2030. That is, you know, until the robot overlords come over and, and take over, in which case they'll, they'll all make us lords for, for knowing so much about them, right? So what kind of stuff does machine learning do? Uh, you've all seen things like deep fakes. Uh, I had a friend of mine, Frank, went ahead and acted like Nick Cage for an introduction for me for a conference talk. This is a five minute video, by the way, and it's hilarious. You should watch the whole thing, share that with you. Um, this was like groundbreaking stuff in 2018. Region, you know, just trying on hair dye before you actually try on the hair dye, uh, which is like a really cool sub. And then you could say add to cart and then see what that hair dye would look like and go home and actually dye your hair that color. Um, this is a project that we did where people are trying on makeup in their browser in real time. You would select stuff and my friend Leon <clears throat> was working on it late into the night and he would send pull requests with images like this and I I loved it because I was like, all right, you go Leon. Looking good, buddy. Um, you know, some of you for this presentation have like AI making sure you've removed the noise in the background or maybe it is the thing making the noise in the background because you've decided to ai generate heavy metal that is a real link uh, to brand new generated metal music 24 hours a day never repeats um, i can send that link to you and it's also if you download the slides that's where it is uh, play pictionary recolor old photos so that way they actually uh, can actually see what's going on. I've probably seen some of these. Let me know if you've seen some of these. And even set up a Raspberry Pi in the window to send you a text the second that parking spot becomes available. I guess that one made more sense before the pandemic, but uh, parking spots are still a very valuable thing, aren't they? So um, if these things are old hat to you, sure. Fine, uh, just a little bit of a review. If you're very familiar with these things, that's OK. Uh, if they're new, if you were like actually pretty excited about some of this stuff, then I would say that um, learn some more about AI. I have a free five day course. It comes with a certificate that you can put on your LinkedIn or you know, your wall, <laughs> whatever you want to do. Twitter, actually, it's good Twitter fun is that uh, it's it's on academy.infit.red, and it's called AI Demystified. And people have actually really enjoyed it. It's got over 5,000 students that have taken this course. Um, it's five days, about 15 minutes a day. That's it. 
super easy to do, super fun. Um, Academy.infinite.red, and if you want to, I'll share that link inside the chat as well. Um, and you say, Gant, of course you said people like your voice. You know, I don't believe you. Like, I don't think this is a, a very enjoyable course. How would I, how would I know? Well, the answer is, I do know. I know 100% because I asked AI. And uh, yeah, I did. I, <laughs> I took all the comments and I put them into a sentiment analysis that's sort of like we did with the faces a moment ago. Um, we are doing a sentiment analysis of people's uh, text and how positive the text is. And I got from, uh, they got that from 25,000 IMDb movie reviews. And then from that text, I went ahead and loaded all the comments from the course and then asked the AI to grade it from zero to, you know, one. And uh, yeah, there was, it was overwhelmingly positive comments. It was really nice. And even the, the negatives were not real. Um, there were just things where it was like, this is a weird movie review. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, it was very, very positive, and so it's been really good. So feel free to go ahead and take that. That is 100% free, AI demystified, and it's great for all the noobs in there. So I did see from the chat, some of you have been a developer for a while, not ready for the AI terms. This thing's a free thing to go ahead and get you those AI terms. And if you take it, uh, I will take your comments and put them in a robot. Just kidding. I, that's sad. I will absolutely read your comments. I'm not. I'm not a jerk. <laughs> I like reading comments with my coffee. So uh, please leave comments in there. Please let me know what you think and what sections were interesting and what sections you know uh, were confusing. And I'll continue to add to that course and give away free stuff. So um, I think we're all in the same sort of like landing spot now, right? We understand uh, what AI could do, beginners and else. So I'll say it's a academy.infinite.red if you wanted to take the course. I saw a question. So uh, what should AI do? Well, this is just a minute here just to talk about, about AI ethics. Um, we as developers have been conditioned that AI is going to be some action movie where we all are upset. There's a lot of things where AI is helping every day. Here's um, OpenStreetMap with 14 years of labor. Watch this map for a second. Boop. That is Microsoft coming back and generating 125 million building footprints, basically doing hundreds of times the work that uh, volunteers did using AI and supporting that stuff. Super cool thing to give back to the community. And then they open sourced it so that you could do this with your street maps. Anybody ever do inventory work? sucks you could always put that on the robots and then of course our health ai is outperforming doctors at identifying all kinds of stuff matter of fact ai is out identifying us at all kinds of uh crazy crazy things and that's what i think it should be doing it should be making the quality of life higher and we should be making our quality of life higher so that way we could build cool stuff so Machine learning, what the hell is it? Let's just go ahead and get some basic terminology because from the chat, I saw a couple of people say, yep, I know what's going on. And um, I saw more people actually, well, I saw, <laughs> I, I saw, I think one person knew the stuff. And so uh, I'm just going to kind of go into some basic terminology for you real quick. You're going to hear this term often, models. Models have layers, much like ogres. And whenever you hear the term model in AI, I want you to feel just fine right now. A model is a function. Boom. Come at me, Scott PhD. Come at me. Model's just a function. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry to pick on you. <laughs> it's uh, it's really fun because, uh, you know, why don't we call it that? Data goes in, data comes out, right? So data went in. We had the faces from you all earlier that was kind of set up on your side. And then what came out of your machine was your sentiment, like your expression of exactly what kind of happened, like how your face was, happy, sad, uh, disgusted, uh, angry, as, as one of you was the entire time. And so what is really cool about this is we have this ability is like put the information in, get information out. Programmers, <clears throat> welcome back to functions. No problem. 
Now, why is it called a bottle? It's because deep down inside, it looks absolutely bonkers. This this is done by James Weaver from, uh, he was at IBM when he wrote this. I know he's still at IBM. No, he wasn't at IBM when he wrote this. He was at Pivotal Labs, but now he's at IBM. And, uh, you know, like I get it underneath there, it's a little bit crazy. If you're trying to take a look at like what's going on, um, like when we're looking at a number that's written, this is a classic example. Um, what, what what kind of stuff is this doing? Uh, we can kind of get into this a bit, and I have a link so that you can actually watch this information, but it chews the information up and brings it into this really crazy network, and that's a model. And what happens is these models, people can get them from three places. It's just like code. Developers, stop being afraid of AI. Where do you get your models from? You download an existing one, NPM, right? Like It's the same thing. Uh, TensorFlow has been doing this thing called TF Hub, where they're basically trying to become the model NPM uh, sort of, I think is their, their idea here. It's a pretty interesting concept. Uh, sure, makes sense. And then you have, um, you could train a model. This is basically what every course is telling you what to do. Right? And so training a model from scratch, that's like writing your own code. So grab it off of NPM, write your own code. Uh, so training a model on your machine or on the cloud or whatever, that's like just making one specifically. And then of course, just like code, again, there's modify existing, which is, this is the stack overflow. This is where you go grab something that does almost what it is that you want. And then you modify it to do just a little bit more of something else or, or just to change it just a little bit to do exactly what you want. Uh, it's the copy and paste and, and, and editing from stack overflow and nothing's changed. If you're a developer, the same concepts transfer over into new terminology. Modifying existing models called transfer learning. Um, we as developers call it stack overflow, but you, know, you can just go find something similar and adjust it. So why is there this great divide between these concepts and JavaScript and all these other things? It's because um, there's a bunch of data science that's separate from practical science. For pragmatic people who are paying attention to this, I would say like that's our job, is to make this stuff actually consumable. For those of you on the data track, because you are very familiar in this aspect, you have all this data, just know that I think it's very important that this data science you've been doing, either for a large company or now for smaller and smaller and smaller companies, um, it used to take a PhD to be in data science. Then, it, then they were hiring people with masters. Then they're hiring. I mean, you see the trend, right? In some point, there's going to be data science for everybody, and uh, sort of prepare and be ready for something like that because I think it's building bridges between um, these silos. So, just as a quick bit for JavaScript, what kind of things can people do? Well, for right now, you already have services. So we love. Uh, serverless functions. We love sort of accessing things from, from this perspective. You can go to Amazon, Microsoft, and Google and get all their cool services, send them a photo, and they'll send you back all kinds of information about it. Might be what you want, might not be what you want, but you get that information. And you are dependent on these online services, which is exactly what they want. And microservicing is not a bad thing, especially if you own it. But if you don't, you start to build something that's a little bit funky and a little bit codependent. So I'd say be careful. Um, the solution to this is that you actually own some of the stuff you have. And I think that that's why JavaScript is amazing for this. JavaScript is so portable. It can exist on the phone. It can exist in the browser. It could exist on an IoT device. And it can exist on your server. You could do all those things. So if you learn a little bit more about machine learning in JavaScript, you're kind of the you're the main bridge builder. Now uh, it's a reset. I mean, you'd be like, okay, we can't uh, <laughs> JavaScript. You know, uh, it's a toy language. You know, why don't you do a real language? Like I don't know, any language that starts with R, uh, right here. And the truth is, JavaScript's not a toy language. As a matter of fact, through WebGL, we have access to the GPU. Uh, through CUDA, we can actually tie directly into um, a server's GPU that way as well. There's all kinds of amazing ways for us to absolutely get 
crazy on that GPU and get some insane speed with JavaScript and machine learning. And so today I say like one of the things you could do is TensorFlow JS, Brain, which is another framework, and then React Native sitting on top of native so you can access the native frameworks. So um, I don't know. I'd say that probably none of you probably knew about all of these different aspects, but definitely keep giving me feedback in the chat. I can always know when I'm going too fast, too slow, uh, but I'm trying to match my audience here. And since I don't have enjoying the show up, I can't see if everybody is angry or just super happy with what I'm saying. So let's do some actual code. So I actually have some demos to show you. For instance, here we are clicking on images, and then these images are telling me what's in there. So it thinks that's an espresso. And since this was not trained on tacos, it says that is a pencil box, but with a very low confidence. It is 29% sure it's a pencil box. And uh, this is actually going through to the lower layer. So this is cool stuff. Like you take an image, a picture with your phone, and then find out what it is. This would be really great for translation apps. Um, you know, so you don't have to go around your house and put post-it notes like uh, the door is called, you know, La Puerta or whatever, you know, and then you have to put the little note on there. Just take a picture of it and be like, all right, we're going to hit translation service and then let you know. This is all running in JavaScript, talking to T TensorFlow Lite. And there's the code available for you. Um, set my repo slash RNTF Lite. Um, and these are all links, and so you can get them later. Uh, here's the classic, what number am I drawing? This was done 100% in JavaScript. All JavaScript, it's not using any lower layer stuff, it's using Brain.js. And so Brain.js, this is a, a perceptron-based network. We can get into what that means, but it's like a barely uh, deeply connected network. I think this is the MNIST examples what gave rise to the term deep learning. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> okay, I saw Scott says he wants hot dog, not hot dog. Boom, there's your hot dog, not hot dog, actually. So I did this one. Uh, this is actually on video, and so you could do stuff now. I, I pulled up pictures on um, on uh, Google Images, but it, I used the Food 101 data set, and what's funny is that you can see there it is seeing a hot dog, but it can see like macarons, uh, the red velvet cake, pizza, fries. Uh, it can identify up to 101 different foods. Maybe this could be like a calorie checker or something like that. I have no idea what this would actually be for. But yes, that's, this this one was inspired by hot dog, not hot dog. And this is on top of Core ML uh, via JavaScript. All of these are JavaScript powered. And that means that we could do these mobile apps. All these are actually mobile apps. And then we could also go to the web where I can do important things like nickornot.com which actually helps me identify whether a person, Nick Cage, you might have heard of him, is in a photo or not. Yes, right now you can go to nickornot.com, upload photos, and see if Nick Cage is in them. This is important because I have a declaration of independence thief.com, which was kind of key. And so it was really important to, to kind of solve this stuff. So one of the things I want to say, uh, and this is all open source stuff, by the way, um, this is adventures in uh, machine learning and JavaScript. So I'm kind of like doing a bit of a whirlwind tour. There's a lot of fun things that you can actually look at here. But uh, this this aspect of like, okay, what is possible uh, is really fun. And I just want to say for, for what is possible, one of the things that I did have is uh, I gave this talk and I showed nickornot.com and my friend Chris Beekler said Gantt uh can't hey i have a question sorry this is an old photo of me can't uh i don't want to stop reading the news but i he told me i want to stop and this is apolitical just take this as you want um if if you get offended i'm sorry and he said can't i, I want to stop seeing the president like i still want to read the news i just want to stop seeing him and he's like can we do that i said yeah you want to build a chrome plugin to do that and he said yeah so we teamed up and made no trump social.com and then in just like a small amount of time there's a chrome plugin that identifies and turns uh the u.s president into a puppy because everybody could use more pictures of puppies in their feet so that was fun too and that was somebody who kind of came back to me after hearing a talk and said hey i want to build something and then we kind of got together and we built it so uh cool stuff so uh, 
there's a little bit more on this adventure. I'll see uh, with the clock here. We've got just a little bit going, and then I, I guess we could take a look at some some examples and some code a little bit uh, in more detail. But let me know in the chat if you're more excited for more examples or more code. Uh, it'd be fine. So uh, this library is called Not Safe for Work JS. Uh, we have shirts, and this was a project for the community. This is something. Let's say tomorrow, or let's say this conference right here. Let's say there was an app for uh, this conference right here, and people could direct message one another in your app. Well, how do major companies handle this? Well, major companies that are big, what do they do? They have people dedicated to looking at and scrubbing and checking and making sure there's no indecency on the website. If you posted something indecent to Facebook, the human being generally goes and finds it. If you find something violent, they go find it. No, this doesn't be violent. Um, you got it. We're getting into some code then. Uh, so what happens is um, they have lots of people that do this. You don't have people that do it. And privacy uh, is a thing where like you don't want people reading messages between each other. And then how can you share it be consistent because there's someone who's going to message and then possibly see something. So not safe for work JS is a free open source software that uh, uses machine learning to identify if content is indecent or not. And I'm not brave enough to do a live demo. I do have an animated GIF, but uh, for the sake of time i think i'm going to roll into going towards some uh, some more demos live coding and live example stuff rather than uh showing you some more about this but if you have any product where people can upload content directly to your website and you're worried that it's going to be well indecent uh this library not safe for work js is a hundred percent free it's written it's been given to the community and people keep contributing to it so this is a really cool thing and i can kind of go into like what uh, what's all involved with that kind of stuff but i guess we could just leave that for q a and we'll check it from there so uh yeah let's do some code here for here so i'm going to switch on out we're going to how does one make a model it does currently image and GIF only. Um, it's for text, by the way. There's a library called Toxicity that can do text um, vulgarity. And so I'd say combine the two. It's a pretty cool feature. So let's go here and um, how does one make a model? You know, we'll come back to this if y'all want to, but I saw people say, let's do some code stuff. Let's do some kind of like some training stuff. And so I have a website that I made recently called uh, Tic Tac Toe, uh, TensorFlow Tic Tac Toe Deco. <laughs> and so I just want to show you for a moment here. This is the game of TensorFlow Tic Tac Toe. And this is also open source. And we'll kind of check that stuff out a bit. Um, so you have the code here. And then you have a video sort of explaining what's going on. But if you watch right now, you have the AI, and the AI is terrible. If we make this AI move, it doesn't know what the hell it's doing because it's seen no data and it's not been trained. Look at that. What a fail. And then you could actually teach it to play a little bit more like each of these. So I would say, like, uh, if you have some more time, definitely check out the video on this one. But um, this is a great example, and we can actually train this to be smarter, and we can actually watch it each time get a little bit smarter. Let me do a quick check on time to make sure everything's good. Yeah, we're doing fine. Um, so I will come back to this if we want to, but I'm going to go to Rock, Paper, Scissors. I have uh, um, dash TF js.netlify.com. And this one's going to give us a little bit more. Uh, you can follow along. So this is going to give us code and we can follow along. So I'm going to walk us through this for a bit and uh, we're going to actually dig into what it sort of looks like. OK. So um, this is rock, paper, scissors. Here's a paper hand. Uh, here's rock 
is that zombies and I think so. And here's scissors. And this data set's done by Lawrence Maroney, who's really awesome. And he's released the rock, paper, scissors, uh, scissors data set open. And he used 3D generated hands to go ahead and get like a variety of skin tones and all kinds of other stuff. So what I'm going to do here is I wrap this up in some JavaScript and I created this object called the rock, paper, scissor data set. And then so I'm just going to tell it to load that data set. So I'm going to click this button right here and then it's loading 10 megabytes of data from the image uh, for, for, for the training set. Now, if you're following along, when you click that button, you're loading this as well. This is happening on your machine. Now, this is what I like about TensorFlow.js is that you're not going to crash my server because you're doing this on your local computer. So if your GPU sucks, it just takes longer for you. And then we get this cool thing on the right side called a visor. A visor is a great thing for when you're debugging. If you hit the back tick key, this thing flies in, it flies out, and you can display different bits of information. So you can see that one of the things that I have here is I made a little function called show examples, and that shows the data that's kind of loaded in, and it creates this random data set of showing examples right here. So this is the rock, paper, scissor data set. It's been loaded into my browser, and then here we are actually actively like checking it out. So I'm going to hide it for a moment. Now, how did I get this in the browser? I did this really cool trick with a sprite sheet. I can show you more about that at some point. So when you see these buttons, these are code. So I'm going to create a simple model. Now, a model is a function, right? This is basically, we, we covered that earlier. And I said models have layers. And that's why I had that little icon that we have here. Now, you might not understand exactly all these layers, but this is based on Keras and TensorFlow 2.0. And so what happens is we say we have a sequential model. And I create a layer, add another layer, here's another layer, and here's another one, and then I flatten it. And then it's the end. So how many layers are we looking at here? Let's go ahead and create that simple model. Let's take a look at this on the right side. You can see we have one, two, three, four, five, six layers. And that's the code to create these six layers. And it's not complicated. Like, how would you want to create if I said, hey, I want to create these these layers because I've I've learned the ways of the machine learning. Well, then you would just say like, OK, well, this is the code that would happen. Add a layer model dot add model dot add model dot add not blowing anybody away here, right? So I'm going to click check the untrained model results. And then when I click this, you could see that it is terrible. So this is what's called confusion matrix that I've got it printed out over here. When I labeled something as rock, it got it correct zero times. It got, uh, it thought it was paper 82 times, and it thought a rock was a um, scissors 63 times. So there you go. Like we're really kind of just terrible. So, in fact, I thought nothing was a rock. The predictor thought nothing was rock. It failed. How much data have I trained it on? Zero. It's just like this tic-tac-toe we had here a second ago. It's been trained on nothing, you know? And so it actually, it fails terribly. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to train this simple model. Now, when I click train the simple model that I've created here, and if you click this too, it'll actually start training and showing the model running through here and, and then adjusting it ever so slightly to get better and better and better so that it actually can understand what is rock, what is paper, and what is scissors. So if we take a look here, we have this loss function. A uh, loss function is like, how wrong were you? So if I said your house had um, two bedrooms, 17 bath, you could be like, oh, you're 50% right. <laughs> and I, I do have 17 baths, but like, you can see like how wrong it is. And so you want to see the loss function go down, meaning that we are actually converging on getting better at this. And the accuracy, which I was 50% accurate earlier when the, you know, I said the statement, we want to see that go up. So we're getting like 95% accurate and we're getting 0.2 loss. So now I've trained it. So everybody remembers this, 
this terrible, terrible job it did a second ago. The code I've written here to train it, by the way, is to shove the data through that model. Right? We just took the data that we saw up here and we took that model and we shoved the data into that model. Now let's go ahead and watch. So I'm going to say check the train model and this is a healthy confusion matrix. The code I wrote was to make the trainer. I did not write rock, paper, scissor, figure out code. As a matter of fact, if tomorrow you gave me rock, paper, scissor, lizard, Spock, my code doesn't change. I run your new data through my same exact code and I get a new function. So when I said it was rock, I got rock, 133. It did make some mistakes. Uh, it said it's paper, I got paper. And when it says scissors, I got scissors. You can see actually scissors was perfect, no mistakes. Paper is a little bit uh, more mistakes on between paper and scissors. It was kind of cool. And then uh, you can go ahead and rock. You can see here is uh, the worst one, the worst performing. So this confusion matrix starts to, to make sense, right? You can kind of get it a little bit. With rock, we are identifying that it is our, our weakest class and what's going on here. Um, and all the code for this is visible right here as you kind of click these tabs. But the cool thing about it is all the code for this page is also available. So you've got uh, sort of like that, hopefully that helps make a concrete idea there. Now you can open your webcam if you've trained it locally. You could download the model so that you can send it to other people and they can be like, oh, okay, you know, I've gotten 95% accuracy or whatever it is. And so if we launch the webcam, I am using my webcam right now, so it does make it really hard. This is great for a live presentation, not so great for a recorded one. But what we have is um, if you launch your webcam, just remember all these images up here at the top have a white background. So <laughs> the only way I could actually get it to work was like pointing it at my ceiling and then actually doing it there. And even then, you know, like the shadows might not work. So you check it out. So here's a much more advanced demo right here. This is going to uh, this launch the webcam will run on your um, the model you just trained. And this advanced demo will do object detection directly in there with your webcam and then circle, like, like identify your hand. This is a much larger model. It's a 20 megabyte model, but it can totally identify what's going on. And it's a lot better than the one we just trained. That's what, 48 kilobytes uh, on a small amount of data. So yeah, yeah just, just as a heads up, we didn't have that much training data and we didn't run it for that long. So uh, you, you've, the more you vary from it, the more it's going to kind of like fail, but it was still pretty cool and it can identify way better on, than, than anything else that I could have written uh, by hand, especially in front of you like that. So this website is a great demo for that. Um, does anybody have any, I guess we'll, we'll have some possible Q&A. Uh, I don't know how the delay is going to work for that, but just, just definitely let me know. Maybe start getting your questions ready. Do you have any questions about that? And then you can sort of like see that same experience over here that I did with tic-tac-toe. So if we went over here and I said like, let's uh, let's go in the corner here and then we'll make this AI move. And that's a terrible, terrible move for tic-tac-toe. So we'll do this, and then they have to block. And then I have this sort of kill here, and then it has to choose which one there. And then I, I X wins, right? So I can say train to play more like X. So if I click this button right here, it's training. And now it just learned. So it learned from watching that game. So let's make the AI play now. It's seen one game, as you can see that right here. It's now learned from one game. So ah, it knew to go in the corner. I guess I will emulate the mistake. Is we'll see if it actually just learned make AI move. So it's actually is doing all the right things. Actually, you know what? I'm going to go back. Uh, I know for a fact that it'll do the moves I just taught it, but what will it do if I do something like this? There you go. It learned not only to um, from watching that one game, 
that uh, the trick is, you know, to follow those moves, but also learn that there's there's definitely the goal of being able to get these three X's in a row. Uh, it's kind of a neat thing here, and that was just from watching one game. Now I could beat this AI no problem, and you could beat it no problem because it's kind of only seen a little bit here. But when you get to like five or six games that it's actually trained, um, it starts to get like a little bit more impressive. And so I think that that's like really one of the interesting aspects of this. This is open source. Everything I've shown you, uh, except for the stuff we built for companies earlier on that I was showing you, is open source. Uh, so please, please, please let me know what your questions are. because I don't know what everybody's levels are at. But uh, that kind of lets you know. So we looked at that. We looked at machine learning. You ran some machine learning on your machine. And I guess like I'm going to kind of round out here and say, um, we need to think of what we could teach a person with data. And now we can have a machine do that. And that's what I think is like thinking and machine learning. And uh, we need bridge builders. So that needs to be people like you. If you're interested in, in data on one side or another, it's kind of key. And so I'll say like um, reimagining everything inspires science. And that quote is by a robot on inspirebot.me. So it's only fitting that uh, that, <laughs> that I, AI is writing my quotes for me now. So that works out well. Um, I do have an entire course on how to do this stuff. It is a pay for course. It'll teach you how to do all the magic that I've done today, plus tons more. Uh, if you want a discount code, you can always use this. Don't don't share it, but it's just use Gantt Talk. You'll always get 20% off. Uh, don't forget about Academy that I've read. Don't forget, I actually have a fun Twitter account that I also manage. It's all just fun Twitter stuff uh, for machine learning, and uh, that I get to deal with that all the time. I also do a newsletter, and I want to say. Thanks so much to um, Infinite Red for letting me kind of like build amazing things. Um, sometimes these land us awesome contracts and sometimes they don't, but they just support me as a mad scientist, um, which is really fun. And most importantly, I would have to say thank you to the people who listen, because without you, uh, without like being interested in these cool and crazy things, um, I wouldn't get to build them. I wouldn't be able to do all this open source. I wouldn't be able to uh, sort of give back to the community like uh, like I want to. And so please let me know if you're interested in any of this. Uh, I build some really rich connections from these talks. And people help come up with ideas, and I help them build their ideas. And I think that that's the way that we stay human in an artificial intelligence world. Thank you very much. And thank you for an amazing presentation. I learned a whole hell of a lot. Yes. Um, I hope everybody else did too. Um, so we don't have any questions in the chat here. I'm going to pop over to Discord. Don't see any questions there. All right. That means um, I've, I've explained everything perfectly. That means you explained everything perfectly. Um, we will um, we will uh, keep the Discord up, um, and uh, if you tag uh, Gant with a question, I'm sure he will um, get notified on his Discord app and be able to respond to you. Um, that's part of the cool thing about having something that we're going to keep quasi permanently is it's a repository of the information and a way to still communicate amongst everyone once this is over. So again, thank you and uh,